Chris here taking a look at a new e-bike brand. It's from a company called Kakuka, and it is their K70. It has 700C wheels. The motor, which is located in the rear hub, is 250 watts, and it does have a 7.5 amp hour battery, which in the pedal assist mode, they claim can give us a range of around 70 kilometers, which I'll be putting to the test in this review. So it does have mechanical disc brakes. They're 160 millimeter, pretty standard. I've seen a lot of these now in the e-bikes I do cover, but what isn't that standard, and it's only about the second bike now that I've covered with it, is it has a belt drive. So it doesn't have a chain or gears. A carbon reinforced belt drive means no maintenance. It's smoother, but of course with no gears, it puts a little bit more strain on that motor with the climbs and it will definitely be testing that out to see how it's going to perform this particular bike. Now the other features it does have, well we've got a screen which is quite clear that's part of the handlebar here and it does also have an accelerator so you can use it in the moped mode up to 32 kilometers per hour. You don't even need to pedal, you can just cruise along and use that but of course it will burn through that battery a lot quicker. Now this bike uses a crank speed sensor right here. It's using little magnets around it and then the sensor to detect when you pedal. And it works really well. It notices that you're pedaling straight away and gives you that assistance when you need it. Our pedals used here are a no brand pedal. They are made out of metal, they feel good and so far they are holding up well. They do have reflectors on them. Now right here we do have a panel that is removable. So this is where the battery is slotted into the frame right here. Normally there would be a front headlight, but unfortunately my headlight was smashed in transit, so it was damaged by the courier company. And it comes with a horseshoe style double-sided kickstand instead of the single-sided we normally see. And I do prefer this. It's very steady and it doesn't rattle when you're riding. In fact, there are no rattles whatsoever on this bike, which gets a big thumbs up from me. The wheels on this model are 700 by 32 c and they are using CST tires. Road tires which are very smooth and have very little rolling resistance. You'll see that we do have this reflective strip around the sidewall here of the tires. That's great for safety and it does use Presta valves. The charge port's located under this plastic flap here which does feel a little bit cheap. Now the charge time is approximately four hours. Now you notice that we've got a lot of cables and plugs here, but it is good that they've used plugs. That means if you need to replace, for example, the lever, you can just plug in a new one. You don't have to rewire everything. So it means replacement parts will be easy just to swap over if you have to do that. Kakuta has routed the cables through the frame, which is a nice touch. The rear hub motor is a typical 36 volt system, and it is 250 watts. And we do get a rear reflector that you need to install. Our seat here, pretty standard, no complaints with it. It is comfortable, it's not real leather, it's just a synthetic imitation leather that they have used. They've used the same synthetic imitation leather style here with our grips. Now they don't spin around or move, which is good, and there's a bit of padding to them, making them quite soft. So we have our controller right here, so this is up the pedal assist levels, up to level five, which gives you assistance up to 32 kilometers per hour, and then down, so five levels in total. This is the power on button, but also to cycle through the modes on the trip computer, and here is our front brake. We have the rear brake, the accelerator, and a button to disable it. Now you can accelerate with this without even pushing off or even pedaling. You can use it just in a moped mode. And now display, this is really clear. You can read it in direct sunlight. It's backlit so you can make it out at nighttime. And you see with my camera here in the daytime, the shutter rate of the cameras just doesn't agree with this display, but it doesn't flicker and ban like this in person when you look at it. So we have our speed right here, the battery indicator broken up into five little bars, each one representing 20% battery life. And you can see then you can cycle through when you go through those pedal assist levels, it shows up with the number here on the screen. You can cycle through then the trip meter, so 26 kilometers so far that I've done. The odometer is 26 as well. So that's the riding I've done so far. This is just day one as I'm filming this, but I will be testing it out further, probably about three, four days in total, of course to go through and see what kind of range I can get out of this. So I really like the way that it's all neat within the handlebar right here. It's nicely done. So what is it like to ride? Well, you don't have to pedal at all to start out. You can just use the accelerator, which I'll do, and that will get me up to 32 kilometers per hour 
with ease on the flat here no problems thanks to those large wheels and the tires have really good rolling resistance so when you do start to pedal this bike is fast it rolls so easy those 700 c wheels make this effortless to then power myself on the level five up to 32 kilometers per hour with assistance once you go over that you're on your own then no motor assistance it's just your own pedal power but then you don't use that battery at all so super smooth very fast and what about the room here that i have so my knees aren't anywhere close to the handlebars the geometry of the frame and the riding position you are lean down a little bit which is normal for this style of bike you're not upright like the other city bikes with the swept back handlebars that I sometimes do review as well. So that's one thing to bear in mind, the riding position for some may seem that you're leaning forward a little too much with the lower handlebars here, but I do find it comfortable and it is this style of bike, but overall this ride, so smooth, so effortless and so quick on the roads around town here. It's absolutely made for this. And my typical climb test now that I do with these e-bikes and e-scooters. So this is a steep climb here. It's approximately 25 to 30 degrees. I'm gonna tackle it first with just the accelerator. I'll try now. So I'll just push off a little bit and it does have enough power to push me ahead. As you can see, it's just slowly, but I'm getting there. Now this is faring a little bit better than some of the e-scooters I've been testing, but I can see now it's struggling, grinding to a halt with my 81 kilos up such a steep climb. Now to pedal, I can use that accelerator to help me. And now pedaling, it is doable. There we go. Once you get that momentum going, this actually isn't too bad. So I might stand up a little bit just to give myself a bit more <laughs> speed here. You have to put a little bit of work into it but a steep like, a climb like this one, yes, it is possible. So that's good. I'm not ending up having to push this bike. Remember, there's no gears at all. Now my brake test at approximately 30 kilometers per hour, full on brakes, which is now not too bad, but I'm still beating in these brakes and I've done now 30 kilometers and they could be better. I really wish that they had gone with hydraulic brakes. But the important thing is, I can stop at this stop sign and stop when needed. I would just really like to have a little bit more braking performance than mechanical disc brakes. Hydraulics with this bike would be perfect. Okay, so a very good ride, so smooth, so fast this e-bike and really effortless on the flat. It's just that climb, big climbs, you do have to put a bit of pedal power into it. And that's really it. And then onto our range now. So my first ride, I did 20 kilometers, then I charged it up again. And my odometer is now reading 66.9 kilometers. So that does mean I've done 46.9 on a single charge. I have one bar left when it comes to the battery. And I wasn't gonna push it any further just in case I got cut short, ran out of battery somewhere down in town. I've got a big climb to get up here. So I did do two big climbs. Battery life is not as claimed. They say 70 kilometers you should be able to get. Now I do weigh 81 kilos and with those climbs and I was using the pedal assist level five and I was using the accelerator as well, that has taken a toll on that range. But I do believe that you should be able to get 55, maybe even over if you are riding this mostly around flat areas, good roads, and you weigh a little less than me, and you use a slightly lower pedal assist level. So the range really is gonna vary. Like worst case scenario, you're looking about there, uh, 40, 45, which I've currently got. The weight of it is just under 18 kilos. It's about 17.8 kilos of bike, which is okay for an e-bike like this. It's, it's not light by any means. The motor performance with the climbs, as I pointed out with that steep climb that I did, that yes, you do need to put a bit of effort in there, a bit of pedal power, uh, because there's no gears. Now, can you ride it if the battery is completely flat? Of course you can, you can ride it, especially on the flat. It rides along just fine, 
like a single fixed gear 700C bike would. Now because of these large wheels and then the low rolling resistance street tires, well city tires, urban tires that are on this, it's great. It's very fast, it's smooth and it's quiet. Absolutely, listen to this. No rattling coming out of this bike whatsoever, which is great. So it gets a huge thumbs up from me for that. Not even the stand rattles, which is normally quite common with these e-bikes that I do cover. So it is, I feel, an excellent e-bike. I really do like it. It's smooth, it's fast, it's, it's a great bike, but it is 1,500 US dollars. So a little on the expensive side compared to the, some of the others that I've covered. But factor in that you're getting the carbon reinforced belt drive and you've got the motor there and it doesn't look like an e-bike at all. It's not one of those foldable bikes, so the quality is a little bit better, it's bigger, it's more comfortable to ride, and the battery non-removable, unfortunately, but that means it doesn't rattle at all, and it gives it that look like it's not actually an e-bike. So there we go, that is my review and my thoughts here on the K70. Thank you so much for watching this review. I hope to see you in my next up and coming e-bike reviews. Bye for now.